with Larry uh, Beardy, and we're going to talk about the ILIP program as well as other language experiences. If you could share what the ILIP program stands for. It's formally known as NLIP, which is Native Language Instructors Program. So now it's ILIP, which is Indigenous Languages Program. And they're all now the same thing. And what I've done through the years is uh, been teaching Indigenous language, uh, primarily uh, Ojibwe language, and the program for potential and upcoming uh, language instructors who uh, come from the north, northern communities, and they go back home to uh, teach language to the students at the schools in the communities. And basically, what I have been doing in that regard, and also just the realm of that program beyond that and many different avenues is work with the language that I am fluent in, which is my first language, Ojikri. Well, I was going to ask you, because you said you um, have been an instructor for about 25 years in the program? Yeah, I've been with, uh, I was with the Lakehead uh, University for at least that. I started in 1985, I think. And I worked with Mary Mitchell. She and I kind of put the Severn Ojibwe Ojikri workbook. People still use it, which was modified by Tommy. And we did back in 1986, I think, Mary, when she was still around, we did a presentation at a conference, language conference in uh, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and uh, did presentation on questions and put hypothesis in language acquisition. So that was the start of my involvement and work with the language. Uh, and she picked me out because I was having such an easy time with the language programs I was taking here. And uh, she figured, you know, since I knew more than the program was about, I should be, like, teaching and working yeah. with it. So that started my involvement in teaching language at the university. So in this, like, on the website, we, we look at examples of excellence. What, in your opinion, would make this program an example of excellence, especially in the language area? The, the teaching of languages, and native languages especially, up here, because there's so many different dialects, that causes a big problem. And the way things are going, a lot of the uh, communities where these native languages are used, they're losing the language. I mean, that's a given fact. And a lot of the people that I grew up with and before that have lost their language to some extent. Well, maybe a large extent, or large for some some for some, but regardless, it's losing. And but for me, I could never really figure that out because I never lose any of the language. Even when I was like working down in southern Ontario, in in the states, where I worked in places that I was not able to use my language at all because uh, there was nobody to talk to. But the fact remains that the language in me has always been. One of my main personality character, innate strengths and personality. It's always there because it's always alive. And so when we look at the language program here at the university and also in the communities, that is, those are the target areas. The language program here is probably the main place for the communities to send their people in to get training on teaching the language in their communities. Therefore, maintaining and keeping the language alive, which is very, very important. People realize that part of it, how important it is to maintain well-being, health, health to, to remain healthy, because the language is an identification marker for each and every member of the community uh, on who they are, what they are, where they come from, where, you know, their history, their uh, their way of life. And because our uh, indigenous languages are spiritual languages, they're very descriptive and powerful. So when we talk to each other, there's no misconstruing what the two people are talking about. It's like head on in sync. I cannot say for English because that's where the term lost in translation comes into play. 
So one of the reasons why it's so important is because when you speak your language, the native language, it makes you feel like you're heard, like what you say is heard for what it is. You're understood. In English, it doesn't happen. So young people, First Nations people, when they try to ask for help, or do you want somebody to listen? And if they use English, it doesn't really work out and they just as well give up communicating because it's not going anywhere or it's totally misunderstood and they are being put into a judgmental position because the communication is one-sided. People that are supposed to listen and understand you are painting an image of you from their own perspective. That's how English works. <laughs> it's not fair. It's, it's, it's harsh. And as a language speaker myself, I can talk really well in my native language. And when I talk with another la native language person, it is so powerful and, and beautiful that uh, you feel supported, you feel good, and you feel happy communicating in that language. And you feel the presence and the power of the natural environment, uh, the elders, and all the people that have been kind enough to give you the knowledge and experiences that you have. As an instructor in the program, yeah. how would you measure success either as an instructor or as the program in general? Success in the language comes in when what I have just been talking about starts to surface and when the people who are working with and learning the language are feeling it and it starts to ignite inside the person. I'm talking about the spiritual part of the, the person. When that happens, then it's activated and that person or people start to know how to learn the language from within. The structure, the foundation has been set in place. It's not for everybody, unfortunately. Everybody has different gifts and strengths. And it's really hard for people who do not have a natural strength in languages to learn and pick it up. They have to work really extra hard to progress. And for those people who have a natural gift, it's an honor and it's fortunate when you uh, run into people like that. Like for me to work with people that want to learn the language, I feel really, I feel really good and motivated to spend time and give what they need to learn the language. Um, with the language program, the people that enter the program. You give them the tools they need and the foundation they need to work with the language to help uh, others learn it. And that is good to have that. Once each of the students, language instructors, mm -hmm. have that, it doesn't really go away. It's the foundation is there. Now all they need after that is experience. and time to be able to work with the language that they know that is theirs and spend time with especially young minds, mm -hmm. young people, because that's where it's, it's needed so that they can grow up and carry on do those uh, language um, speaking uh, skills and how to teach them and what to use for resources and tools and strategies and best practices and stuff. For my part, what works best and what has been successful in uh, helping language instructors gain skills, knowledge, and expertise to teach the language is me modeling to them best practices, teaching strategies and methods, and also the ability to use and define, identify the skills they have that they can use to assist them in teaching. For example, you need artistic skills, creativity, 
uh, to produce your resources for teaching. What yeah. you need to teach with, whether it's technology, uh, artwork, um, storytelling, or other avenues, arts and crafts, and, and like actual environmental uh, education, being out in the wilderness, uh, learning how to uh, uh, live out in nature, and knowing, you know, the different animals and their way of life, the, the land, the rivers, the lakes, all of those things, all of that natural way of life environment is part of our language. And uh, I, I did include technology there that's part of the new language and stuff. But it's what you teach that is most important. What would be your vision for language? Yes. My vision for language learning and keeping the languages alive or even having the people that do not speak it or that want to speak it learn to speak fluently, not just some words. For people to learn to speak like I do fluently, they have to have a program that is applicable to all people. Okay, that's important to point out because too many language programs Instructors and people uh, don't want to share. Some people say with good reason because they work so hard and spend a lot of money on it. But there is no good reason for not sharing. And then people, you know, get old and they die off and lose the gifts they were supposed to pass on. And that's kind of sad. And so what I have tried to show my other colleagues all my life is to share I do a lot of work that is not paid for. I don't make money for that. I have jobs, but I also take jobs that pay way less than they should be. But because I have an opportunity to share and give those gifts, uh, I was given to share, uh, which is primarily language. My vision is to have a language program in place that is accessible to anybody and everybody and the uh, curriculum and the program is user friendly and it speaks to all people not just academics or language experts because those are the last people that you want to give it to because they're already experts <laughs> what about regular people families children parents they need to have access to that. Parents' families need to know and learn the language to help their young children learn it.